Hello, I am Sherilyn Wood Stalling. I have a passion for bees, and I am deeply concerned for humanity because our bees are disappearing worldwide. What if in the mid-1990s, super pesticides were introduced to the world? What if these super pesticides caused four scary symptoms to nearly all bugs? These symptoms are a weakened immune system, bizarre or bis disoriented behavior, a loss of memory, and a loss of appetite or possibly a destroyed digestive system. What if these super pesticides penetrate the entire plant, the roots, the stems, the leaves, the flowers, and anything the flowers produce, seeds, nuts, grains, vegetables, and fruits? What if we cannot wash off these super pesticides? They are in the foods that we eat. They are not something you can get rid of. What if our government has done no collective test to see the effects of all these foods that they are having on our bodies, on our children, and on our elderly? It is no longer what if. It is becoming now. In the mid-1990s, Bear Crop Science, yes, the same company that gave us aspirin, introduced a nicotine-derived group of chemical pesticides called neonicotinoids. Let's shorten the name to neonics. Neonics kill all sorts of bugs. These perfect pesticides, neonics, kill the bugs by causing a loss of memory, a weakened immune system, a loss of appetite, or more possibly a rotted digestive system, and bizarre or disoriented behavior. American entomologists have called the phenomena of the disappearance of the bees colony collapse disorder because there is no evidence the bees are dying from disease. With the exception of the queen bee, the baby larva, and a few nurse bees, the entire hive just flies away, never to return. Some beekeepers report this disappearance occurs about a week after the bees exhibit bizarre or disoriented behavior. After David Hackenberg lost his first five, 400 hives, he rushed the remaining bees to entomologists in Penn State University. Autopsies done on the remaining queen bees and nurse bees shocked the entomologists because they found that virtually every virus known to attack a bee with a weakened immune system was present and many fungi were also present that are only found on bees with a weakened immune system. Doesn't it become curious that a weakened immune system is exactly what neonicotinoids produce? When other beekeepers brought their bees to entomologists, the scientists were horrified to discover that the bees' guts were blackened and seemingly destroyed, and there was undigested pollen still in their stomachs. Rather coincidental, don't you think? Perhaps neonics don't exactly cause a lack of appetite, but rather a destroyed digestive system. To quote Graham White, speaking about one of the neonicotinoids, this highly toxic, systemic, and persistent insecticide in the United Kingdom is effectively sterilizing fields of all soil invertebrate life, including earthworms, beetles, ladybirds, butterflies, moss, etc. End of quote. Neonics are known to be highly toxic to bumblebees, honeybees, butterflies, moss, wasps, hornets, beetles, and even hummingbirds and bats. In fact, neonics are so toxic that a bee doesn't need to eat the pollen or drink the nectar of a flower. It just needs to walk on the plant to be poisoned. And how about that loss of memory symptom? Even an elementary school child learns how, when a bee discovers a flower, it returns to the hive and communicates with other bees about the flower's location. With a loss of memory, a bee can't even find its way back to the hive. 
Nonetheless, we must not ignore the fact that a dying bee always leaves the hive to die. Now you may have heard it said that neonics were banned in France in 1999, and yet bees are still dying there. This is a partial truth. In 1999, one neonic product only, named gaucho, which was used on sunflower crops, was banned by the French government for use on sunflower crops. Gaucho is used to this day on wheat, barley, oats, and sugar beets. All other brands of neonics were continued to be used and are used to this day, and they are sprayed on crops and flowers and beekeepers in France have colony collapse disorder. And perhaps you have also heard about cell phones harming bees. Professor Kimmel of Germany, whose scientific data was misconstrued, is outraged that no one even called him about his data before an article appeared. He denies any findings that cell phones harm bees and the highly touted new mystery virus called the Israeli Acute Paralysis Virus, or IAPV. IAPV has completely different symptoms than colony collapse disorder. With IAPV, the bees have what is called shivering wings. Then they develop paralysis, and they die outside the hive in visible little piles. They don't disappear. Seemingly, IAPV is not the real culprit, but just another opportunistic invading virus. By the way, did I mention that Bear Crop Science distributes neonics to 100 countries? Neonicotinoids are the chemical names. Amidochlorprid is sold as the brands Confidor, Merit, Admire, Legend, Provado, Encore, Gaucho, Premise, Connect, Evidence, Leverage, Murala, Provado, Trimax, and Advantage. Thiamethoxam is sold as the brands Ectara, Platinum, Helix, Centric, Flagship, Cruiser, Adage, and Meridian. Cloth Anodyne is sold as the brands Poncho, Titan, Clutch, Belay, Arena. And the least toxic of all the neonics, thiochlorprid is sold as the brands Alanto, Berriard, Biscaya, Calypso, Monarca, and Proteus. Do you find it coincidental that a worldwide phenomena of bees disappearing is occurring where these neonics are sold? Isn't it curious that in the last five years, Alzheimer's has increased? and autism in children, which is a loss of memory and bizarre or disoriented behavior, has likewise increased. And now, what are we seeing in our high schools? 90,000 children with such weakened immune systems that they have succumbed to staph infection in the schools that used to only occur in hospitals. However, if you are a mother or a father are you not outraged that our government has done no tests to verify whether or not neonics that we are now forced to eat in our, so many of our foods and produce are in fact safe for human consumption? Oh, that can't be true, you say. Well, guess what? The EPA simply asks the chemical companies for their data about whether or not these chemicals are harmful to humans. Think that somebody would have heard of a health study done by Bayer or anybody regarding the effect of humans who had been consistently fed over a period of years foods or produce where the food was sprayed, you know, as it was growing with neonicotinoids or the seed was coated with neonicotinoids such as sugar beets are today and then planted and we ate it. Don't you think there would have been a study like that?